first step of the CB2E lab is to collect various samples of cellulosic biomass to ferment. Cellulose is a primary component of the plant's cell wall and can be found in cardboard, paper, dried grasses and leaves, sticks, and pet bedding. Be creative in your search. The next step of the lab is to grind the biomass samples into small particles and add them to your test tubes. A standard coffee or spice grinder works well for this purpose. Here you see it go to work on the samples we collected, even cardboard. The goal is to increase surface area. When you have your samples sufficiently ground, you can prepare the test tubes. Before you put anything inside, it is first essential to label each tube with the biomass and pretreatment information. Indicate this both on the tube and the cap. It is good scientific practice to create a control to isolate background glucose and ethanol levels. Controls can include biomass samples without enzyme, water with enzyme, or just water. The next thing to do is to weigh out roughly a gram of biomass and add it to the test tube. Also measure 25 milliliters of water and add that as well. Cap the tube and shake it thoroughly. The third step is pretreatment, where you will boil your samples to loosen up the cell wall structures. Remember to wear your safety glasses and goggles before you put the samples in the boiling water. It's also possible to just use a beaker on a hot plate for this phase. The goal of the boiling pretreatment is to make the cellulose more accessible. The next step is to add cellulase enzyme to some of your samples. The enzyme will break down the cellulose in the tube and convert it into glucose for fermentation. Remember to shake the tubes well after adding cellulase. Then store them in a warm water bath overnight to allow the enzyme to activate. If you wish to pause the experiment at any time, you can put the samples in a refrigerator. This will halt the process. The fifth step is to add yeast to the samples and begin fermentation. Measure out roughly one gram of standard baker's yeast and add it to each sample tube. Make sure to shake thoroughly so that the mixture is fairly homogeneous. After shaking it, it is important to loosen the cap slightly so that the pressure doesn't build up during fermentation. This could skew your results. The yeast will convert the available glucose in your samples into ethanol and carbon dioxide. After adding the yeast, you can return the tubes to the water bath overnight. Before and after each stage in the process, it is important to take glucose and ethanol measurements. A standard blood glucose meter and classroom grade ethanol probe will work well. This will help you track the matter and energy transformations across the entire process. The goal of the lab is to chart how various types of biomass and pretreatment techniques influence the amount of ethanol produced.